Back in December of 2013, my wife and I had traveled to the Skull Cult to obtain some documentation um, and we saw these machines that we thought were tithing machines and we actually did some more research and found out the system is much worse than what we had previously thought. And uh, you saw there at the beginning this man, this quote unquote pastor there at the Skull Cult, you saw him scanning his finger. And so we're going to actually watch these videos from their website and we're going to see what this whole system is really all about. You aren't going to believe this. Let's watch. Hi, my name is Pastor Steve Yates. I'm going to take a moment and talk to you about our new children's check-in system known as Alexio Amp Touch. The terminals are right here. We're going to use them starting this fall sometime, possibly in late September. But I want to show you the basic operation of it. The easiest operation of it is something called the fingerprint scanner. If you've had a chance to uh, input your data, you'll know that we took a fingerprint scan from each of your fingers or each of your hands. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. I have my right index finger scanned in. You'll just walk up to the terminal, firmly place your finger down, and it will bring up your entire family. The primary option that you have is something called express check-in. The express check-in allows you to check in all of your family for the same events that day. The only reason you wouldn't want to do express check-in is if you are modifying, say you're only coming to the 9 o'clock service, so that you won't check your child into the nursery for the 11 o'clock service and different things to help us have a more accurate uh, head count. The other option of checking in is using a PIN number, such as selecting the name function, typing in your last name, and then selecting your first name. There's an option for a scroll down till you find yourself. And then you have, if you inputted your data, you were given a four to six digit PIN. If you haven't done that yet, it's very easy for us to enter that, help you enter that when you come in. So in this case, I'll put in my PIN, and it brings up the same screen, the entire family. To check someone in, you just select the person, select the event, and hit finish if you do actually touch it. And then it prints out two different items. Number one is a name tag that would be for the child. The exception to this is with the nursery, it will print out two name tags, one for the back, one for the bag. The second piece of information it prints out is the security code, which if you have three children, it will print out three lines. This is what you keep with you, what you check the child in with, and what you check the child out with. Some of you may have questions about the system, why we're doing it, and things. I encourage you to go to calvarychurch.org, select children, and select children's ministry check-in, frequently asked questions. Because this covers why do we need a check-in system? What is AMP Fusion Touch? How does this work? Some basic questions that you may have. If you have further questions beyond that, I encourage you to contact myself or one of the children's ministry staff, we'd love to sit down with you or tell you more. Thank you so much. Okay, now there's a whole lot of things that happened right there, a whole lot of things that were said, very important things that you need to understand. Okay, first of all, let me just explain something. The reason for this video is because of what the Bible calls the mark of the beast. This system that's coming is, is described in Revelation chapter 13. This is a future thing that's going to happen after the body of Christ has been removed. All right? And a lot of people at these big mega churches are going to be here for that. They're not genuinely saved. And I can tell you as a fact, I know people that go to that place there, the Skull Cult, you know, also known falsely as Calvary Church. I know people that go there and I know they're not saved. Okay. Uh, they do some very wicked things there. So, it's going to be very bad. But you see, this thing of the mark of the beast is, if you take the mark, you go to hell. You can't ask forgiveness. You can't say, oops, I made a mistake. Oh, no, I took the mark. I worshiped the beast, but I, I'm really sorry about that. Uh-uh. And I have sermons on that proving that from Scripture. If you take it, this is the only thing in the history of the world 
a thing that an action that you can take as far as taking something to be part of a system and it automatically damns you to hell without any possibility of forgiveness. That's why I'm making this video because it is such a serious issue. Probably one of the most serious ones that there are. I mean, this is this is very very bad. But notice a couple things from that video. Number 1, the infinite loop of music that's playing in the background. What's it doing? It's part of mind control, part of brainwashing. Okay, you can study that thing. It's it's a kind of a positive sounding music in the background to reassure the person that's watching that everything is okay. Don't worry about it. And it's it's another level to the mind control because it's something that your brain has to assimilate. And so your brain, it starts, your brain's going, okay, I got the music thing here, but what, what, did, he, what did he just say? Well, I guess everything's okay, because the music's nice. See, music is a key factor in movies, in television, in newscasts, everything. Music is very, very, very important. Okay, a whole study on that, The Devil and Music, if you want to hear that, it's here on YouTube, on my channel. Uh, music is very powerful. That's the first thing I want to say. But notice the other thing there, it begins and he says about how the fastest way to check in is with your finger. Biometric scanning. That's the fastest way. Now if you want to do it the other way, which is much more difficult and slower, now he didn't come right out and say it, but it's strongly implied, is you can enter your name and then your PIN number and it takes a lot longer. See? If you want to get in quick, you just, just scan your finger. It's very, very fast and efficient. And what do you get after you get part of the system? What do, you, what do you get after you're signed in to the computer? What do you get? You get a name tag and an ID card. Hmm. A specific number that's assigned to you. That you can be tracked with. I mean, a hundred years ago, people were mad about Social Security coming in. Why? It was a number assigned to their name. A lot of people refused to take it. Why? Well, the people knew the Bible a lot more back then. They followed the Bible a lot more back then. Unlike, to, unlike today. I mean, people now, you know, we have, we're so many numbers and things in our lives. It's bad. We're controlled very much. And, you know, this system here takes it to the next level. It's much, much worse. And we're going to look at the frequently asked questions and things, and we're going to look at some of the stuff I want to show you that it's very, very, very bad. But now let's continue on here. We're going to look at the other video that's on their website about this whole system. And I want to pause this one periodically just to make some comments, okay? So let's watch this other video. Hi, my name is Pastor Steve Yates. I want to take a moment and talk about the operation of our new Ant Fusion Touch Systems. It is a check-in system that we're going to be using here at Calvary Church, primarily for the children's ministry. A number of you will be introduced into this and ask how to update and verify information. Something we've been doing for a little while, but I want to take a moment and show you how this works. First step is we go here and select name such as myself being Steve Yates, I am going to select my last name by either because it's a touch screen, you can either touch it here or you can write it on the keyboard. Once you've selected the name, you just touch it and then hit OK. When we're updating information, we have a master pin. If you haven't already been given your family pin, so in this case, I'm going to enter the master pin, which if you're working the kiosk, you'll be given that prior to starting. Let me just pause there for a minute. Uh, could you please give me some scripture, anywhere in scripture, where Christians meeting together in a congregation, a congregational assembly where you're supposed to have master pins and numbers associated? Where's the stuff at? It's not in there. 
By default, as you just saw, we set the terminals to time out after 15 seconds. So you will see at times that it will time out before you get a chance to update some of the information. In this case, it shows my family. You would select one of the persons that's with you, touch their name, and then go down to their account, said my account. Once you select that, you can s the primary information we're interested in is the left column, being the personal information, the household information, and the contact information. Something that I use as an icebreaker with the folks is if you look at their date of birth, it says what day they were born on. And I always say, in my case, hey Steve, did you realize you were born on Friday? Go through this and look at it, see, check their date of birth, check their marital status, their anniversary, and then on down these different information. If it's somebody that is within children's ministry, we ask them to please enter a pin down on the bottom right, or bottom left from this perspective. In order to update information, again, being a touch screen system, all you have to do is touch the screen, and then you arrow through it. You verify, like in this case, the email address, home phone, and different pieces that's in that box. And then the last one is enter a personal identification number. So let's see, so far we have your marital status, your home address, home and your household information, your email address, your birthday, your anniversary, your children, um, isn't this a little bit of an intrusion into privacy? I mean, shouldn't we be a little bit weirded out when we see a church that is getting all of your personal information and linking up to a computer system? So you are data-based? Uh, and by the way, if you want to do a little bit of research into history, the very first government to use computers to database their people. Uh, they were IBM computers used in uh, Nazi Germany. Say, oh, now come on, research it, look it up. The people had uh, numbers in the concentration camps. There are pictures of them. Number right here on their chest, number on their wrist, number on their hands. They were Database, numbered, bad thing. We encourage people to use a four to six digit number that you will remember. Allow them to enter that and hit save. The next piece that we talk to them about is entering fingerprints or photos. Now, please understand, we do not require fingerprints. There's some people that are sensitive towards giving their fingerprints. It's okay. That's why we have the option of the personal identification number or PIN. All right. Interesting that uh, he goes like this with his hands real quick. Um, you know, I don't know if that was intentional or if that was a spirit that was within him, but if you look at it, 666. See? Interesting. I'm sure that there's nothing to that. That's just conspiratorial, right? But uh, notice that he says that fingerprint, you know, doing your fingerprint is not required. It's just optional. You don't have to do it right now. But guess what? That's how all these systems come in. At first, well, you don't have to do this. It's just optional. You, you, you can do it if you want to. If not, you know, it's okay. You can do your PIN, your six digit number, you know, you can do a, a number or you can have your fingerprints scanned, but it's all just optional. Um, well, do I have an option to not take a number or not scan my finger? No. Hmm. And you'll see that later in the frequently asked questions. In fact, if you're a visitor to the Skull Cult, you also have to be put into the computer system. Oh, yeah. Let's continue. So if you are entering fingerprints, you select the fingerprint button. 
and then you pick a finger, such as what I did here was my right index finger. I will also scan in my left by selecting scan right here, and then go over to the unit, which this is the scanning unit, and firmly place your finger flat against it. You will see a fingerprint come up here. You let go, wait just a second, and it cycles back to the previous screen. At this time, it is verifying to see if that fingerprint is in use by anybody else. Okay, we gotta pause just for a minute there again. Uh, we're gonna see if the fingerprint is in use by anybody else. Um, I thought a fingerprint system was foolproof and nobody else could have your fingerprint. Well, uh, in terms of God creating man, yes, that's true. Nobody else can have your fingerprint. God has created your hand to be very unique. But in our modern technological era, somebody can get your fingerprints. My wife knows about that. She was actually trained by the FBI to do fingerprint, you know, fingerprinting and things like that. You can take somebody's fingerprint and you can duplicate it. And you can actually steal their identification if it's based on a fingerprint. And we're going to see a video a little bit later on where actually the ACLU is against this very system that a church is bringing in. And he actually says somebody can steal your fingerprint. So later on, the guy says, you know, about, you know, it's, it's your fingerprint, and it'll, it's unique identification. Here he's saying that we have to check the computer to make sure nobody else has your fingerprint. Let's continue. I'll give it just a second. Many people will ask about the fingerprints is it required? Is it different things while it's going through this process? And I just want to encourage you that it is not mandatory to use fingerprints. All right, as you see, my fingerprint is there. You can do all 10 fingers if you want to. I recommend doing one per hand. Most people do their left and the right index finger or their left and the right thumbs. Because you have to picture if you're coming in in the morning, and it's somebody that has a baby in one arm and a bag and everything, and which finger can you get free? Okay, let me hit save here. And the same way, you can do update the photo by touching photo here, and then update photo. The photo device is right here. A white light will come on right here, and you line it up, depending on the person's height. This terminal will go forward and back to line them up. If it is somebody that is shorter or shorter than this machine, we can take it with the picture with a laptop and add it, okay? Why are they so interested in your photo? Hmm. And doesn't the Bible say that there will be a mark upon the forehead, in the forehead, in the hand, you know? The Bible actually says that there are two things there, in the forehead and upon the forehead, back in Revelation chapter 20. In uh, Revelation 13, it says in, you know, the King James Bible I'm talking about here, the true Bible. But very interesting that this system that they have scans both the hands and the forehead. But I'm just being paranoid now, okay? I'm just, I'm crazy, I'm being paranoid, all right? Because we just know that the mark of the beast is going to be out there in the bars and the strip clubs and the drug dealing places, but it would never be in a church, right? Well, uh, you ought, maybe you ought to read the Bible sometime because the Bible says that the whole world will worship the beast. Where do you worship at? In buildings that people call churches. Hmm. Interesting. Let's continue. So once you've updated all of that information and they are set, I have a generic event set up in here called I just updated my info. I encourage you to select that with your touch screen. Give it a second. And it will say checked in and then hit finish. And when you do that, it will print out a label that gives it your name, such as this says, hello, my name is Steve Yates. And then it gives you a security ID. 
These are the two pieces of information that will be given when you check in your children or when the children are checked in. The only instance that you will see something different is a nursery age child will get two of these, one for the back, one for the bag, and then each person above that up to sixth grade will get one of these. So uh, small children get a tag, two of them, two ID tags, one for the bag, their diaper bag, the other for their back. Hmm, almost like they're uh, being tracked. Say, oh no, not that. They wouldn't track, you know, the whereabouts of a child. I mean, they, they certainly wouldn't do that because that would require radio frequency identification devices and GPS systems and things like that. They, they wouldn't do that, would they? Let's keep watching. And then the parent will get an entry for each child, such as if they had five children, there will be five entries on this day. So that is the basic update of information. If you have any further questions, you can ask for me or one of the Children's Ministry staff. We would love to help you. Thank you. Well, I just can't imagine why anybody would be against a wonderful system like this. I mean, I would just love to help you and answer your questions because this system is just wonderful. Now let's go to the Frequently Asked Questions page at their website. I'll show you a few things here that should give you some concerns. Frequently Asked Questions about Electronic Check-In. Okay, number one, why do we need a check-in system? You are leaving what is most precious to you in our care and expect a safe and loving environment. A check-in system helps instill confidence and it implements a culture and environment of safety. This new system will also help us in tracking visitors more effectively and provides leaders with better information to minister to individuals. Now, if you know anything at all about uh, the Big Brother system and the whole New World Order structure and things like that. There are a lot of key words that these people use. Okay, Things like, we're doing this for your safety. Okay, We need to help have a safer environment. Uh, uh, we, we need to you know, instill confidence. Things like this. All these different terms and terminology there. But notice it said that we need to track visitors. It's not just the members, they want to track visitors. And it says, implements a culture and environment of safety. A culture? Um, wouldn't that be not just the building there, but all of life? Culture, in other words? So, you mean to tell me that a church would implement a new and different culture? That's what the Bible says is going to happen with the Mark of the Beast system. Worshipping the Antichrist. Absolutely. Let's look here at the second one. What is Amp Fusion Touch? There are two parts to our new system. Amp Fusion is our web-based church management system, better known as our database. Amp Touch Check-In is our centralized check-in system for families, which increases security tracks visitors more effectively and provides leaders with better information to minister to individuals. It's back there in the book of Acts someplace. I, I can remember Paul, they, they signed uh, the Christians up in Antioch to a system so that the leaders could better minister to them. I mean, people, if this stuff doesn't really, really scare you and and you know, say, whoa, I don't want to be part of this thing, you better check and make sure that you're even saved, okay? This stuff is horrible. No church has a right to be doing this kind of thing, okay? Let's look at the third point here, or the third frequently asked question. How does this work? From these new touch check-in kiosks, families can check their children into the appropriate class or event via a fingerprint scan or search by name. 
a name tag for each child and a parent security receipt containing a unique security code for each child are printed. Parent will show their security receipt to enter the secure children's hallways and classrooms. Think about this, okay? Think about this for a second. Let's say rapture happens, Christians leave. Now all you have left behind are false converts, false brethren as the Bible calls them. And they're there, they go there. And they walk into the system, they're in there, they, they have finger scanned or did their number, and their children are now being held hostage, basically. They're, they're now in the nursery system. They go into the main auditorium, and up on the screen comes the Antichrist. The Bible says the whole world's going to worship the image of the beast. Up comes the Antichrist. And there he is, and they say, all here are now required to take this special chip, this mark, and worship our Christ. And the parents go, wait a second. This is what my crazy relatives used to talk about. This is the mark of the beast. That's the Antichrist up there. What are we going to do? We've got to get out of here. And they get up and they walk out and then the people say, where are you going? This is the mark of the beast. This is crazy. This, this stuff is going to damn you to hell. We're out of here. We're leaving. And they run back to the nursery to get their children. But oh, guess what? The security is waiting for them. And the security says, your children are now part of the state. Your children are now our property. Your security code, your card, has been deactivated. Far-fetched? I don't think so. Let's keep going here. Let's look at the next one. Number four, how do I get started in using the new system to check in my children? Starting this fall, each touch... Uh, check-in kiosk will be staffed by a friendly, helpful person who will assist you as you learn how to use our new system. All you have to do is give your last name for now. Okay? They'll ratchet this thing up as time goes by. Number five, I don't have any computer skills. Will I be able to learn how to do this? Because it is a simple touch screen, you do not have to have computer skills and be assured there will be a kiosk manager there to help you if needed. And in the future, and when we were there, by the way, my wife and I, when we were there in December, there were armed guards walking around. Full glocks on their hips, all the handcuffs, tasers, everything. Walking around. Security vehicles outside. Guys look like they just got out of the military or were still active duty. See, there will be your uh, kiosk manager in the future. You know, make sure you check in or we'll smash your skull. Because it is the skull call after all, you know. Yeah. Number six. Where are the check-in kiosks located? It is our goal to serve you as quickly and efficiently as possible by providing eight touch check-in kiosks in four strategic locations. Two kiosks will be located outside the nursery, two at the base of the Grand Staircase, two at the playground entrance, and one at the Cal Calvary Preschool entrance. The kiosk at the Children's Ministry Desk is for visitors only so that our welcome team can spend a little extra time with them. <laughs> Answer questions and bring them to their rooms. <laughs> Our welcome team. Yay! Welcome team, you know. <laughs> I mean, those will be your, uh, you know, your big burly men that stand there and say, Welcome to the church here. You got your ID card on you? If not, we're going to have to take you out back, you know. <laughs> hey, people, come on. You can't see through this thing. I feel bad for you. Number seven. Can I check all my children in at one kiosk? Yes. You will be able to check in all of your family members at one time. How convenient. Number eight. Why printed name badges and security tags? The primary security feature of the check-in system is the matching numbers between the child's name tag and the parent's security receipt. Touch check-in prints a random security number on the tags. 
The random security number is the most secure since it changes every week. You will no longer need to show your laminated parent photo ID cards. What? So in other words, they already have a system set up. A laminated parent photo ID card. It's already there. Now let's go to the next level. See? See how it works? And it was probably like at first, oh, it's just a, you know, just a parent photo ID card. It's not going to go any further than this. Oh, did we mention that now we have a finger scanning technology and computers that database everything about you? But it's all for your safety. Sure it is. Number nine. Why update my information? Having up-to-date and proper information on your child is key to improving security. Through the Mick, or my, I was going to say Mick Calvary, yeah, my Calvary Pulse website application, parents can easily provide the necessary family information as well as keep it up-to-date. Parents can provide all pertinent contact information for themselves and the children, including photos. How much do you want to bet that this thing's linked up to Facebook? How much do you want to bet? I can almost guarantee you. Almost guarantee you. Let's continue. Now this one here, this next one you aren't going to believe. This one's really crazy. Number 10. Why am I asked for such detailed information? See, see, see how they work this thing? If you have somebody that actually has some common sense left in their, in their brain yet, and they're actually starting to get a little worried, and they say, whoa, wait a second, what? why are you asking me for all this detailed information? What's going on here? I mean, why are you treating me like a criminal here? I mean, I'm like being databased. What's going on? Why am I being asked for this detailed information? Look at how they respond. Because emergencies will happen. You mean kind of like terrorist attacks or something? Sure. At a touch of a button, electronic check-in systems also provide the ability to know which children are in our facility and exactly where those children are. Get a hold of that one. In case of an emergency, we need to know where each and every child is as well as their parents' location. That knowledge allows us to more quickly and effectively enact emergency plans and contingencies. Now, how is that possible if these cards that you get don't have an RFID system in them, a little tracking chip in them? Because after all, you can have a child that's in their little class or something like that, and they go down the hall to the bathroom. And an emergency happens, and you wouldn't be able to know where they're at. See? Unless there's a chip in there. They can track exactly where the child is. As well as the parents, too, by the way. And uh, guess what's going to happen in the future? You say, what's the next level? See, it started out with parent photo ID. Then it has go, gone to an ID card with a special tracking card that you finger scan to get. What's the next system? Somebody comes and they go, oh, I, for, I drop, must have dropped my card or something, which you're going to see here too, you know, as we continue. I dropped my card. Well, wouldn't it be more handy if we all just had a, chip implanted in us? You won't even need to check in. Walk through the scanner as you're coming through the door. It knows you're there. It knows everything about you to keep you safe. Sure. Number 11. Why is my nursery child issued two name tags at check-in? Your nursery child will receive one name tag which should be placed on his or her back. And the second name tag will be placed on the child's diaper bag. Hmm. Placing a name child on, or name tag on the child's back. Well, that can come off. Child gets to rolling around on the floor or playing or doing whatever. That can come off. We're going to need a better system so that these uh, tracking capabilities uh, stay with the child. It's right here, folks. The mark of the beast. It's that close. All we need now is for the body of Christ to leave so that the Antichrist can be revealed, then they have the man that is hooked up to the mark. Incredible. Go 
on the number 12. What happens if you need to, to page a parent? You will be paged by your child's unique security code printed on the parent security receipt. This is a random number that will change each week. We will no longer be using your family number on your parent photo ID card. They can page you because you have a number. Interesting. Number 13. We encourage you to keep track. Oh, I'm sorry. What happens if I lose my parent security receipt? We encourage you to keep track of your receipt by placing it in the same place each week. You may even want to stick it on your clothes. Oh, yeah. In the unlikely event you lose your receipt, you may reprint a receipt from one of the kiosks the same way you checked in. And how much do you want to bet that that system is going to fall apart? It's usually designed to. See, they go in and they say, well, I can't get a receipt. It's, it won't give me the receipt. It's trying to say it's a new, a new check-in and I can't get my receipt. Well, we're going to have to verify, sir. You aren't going to be able to get your children until we verify. Oh, isn't this system such a pain? We need something better, like a implantable microchip. It's the next step. That's what's coming. On to the next one here. Okay, number 14. I hear that we need to be fingerprinted to use this system. Isn't that a little extreme? Again, see, they're appealing to somebody that actually has common sense and says, whoa, wait a second here. This is a little extreme, all right? Fingerprinting? What's going on here? Now watch how they don't answer the question. This is just classic mind control. This is, this is classic brainwashing. They pose a question, and then they come out and they assure you that everything's okay, and they never answer your question. Watch. We ask that each parent or guardian scan a fingerprint from each hand into our system. The touch check in kiosk takes your fingerprint and translates it into a code. This code is not extractable from the system, nor can we reproduce your fingerprint. Absolute total lie. That is not true. They can to do that. That's why they said at the beginning, the guy in the video, he says, we need to scan your fingerprint to see if anybody else has the same fingerprint. They're lying to people here. Back to it. The main purpose of this is for you to quickly access your household's information. Well, that's the business of the church to have that, yeah. Each of the touch check-in kiosks is equipped with a finger ID scanner. It's a fast, safe, and or inexpensive and reliable way to know that you're the right person to sign in your children. Once your fingerprints are recorded, you just need to scan your finger and a list with everyone in your family will be presented. Then you just select the children that will be checking in that day. Did they ever answer the question, isn't this a little extreme? No. They explained their system, but they didn't say, no, this is not extreme, don't worry about it, this is not the mark of the beast, it's never going to go further than this, don't worry, it's, it's not a big deal. They never said that. They never answered their own question. Incredible. Number 15. How do I check in a child, friend of son, daughter, who is visiting without a parent? Please go to one of the check touch check-in kiosks where a volunteer will add the visiting child to the system with the host parents as guardians. So, even if you have a child that's not going there, say a mother and father, you know, as aunt and uncle, they take their niece or their nephew along with them and the parents aren't there. Guess what? That child still has to be checked in. But we're not forcing anything on anybody. It's all voluntary. It's all just, you know, we're just trying to keep people safe. It's all just a culture of safety. Uh-huh. Even visitors having to check in. I mean, come on. Stuff is incredible. And, of course, you go around the rest of the website, and it's all this, you know, here are the uh, children's ministries covenant that you have to be Signing, I guess. Number one, you have to have a genuine heart for God, which these people don't. Uh, manifested my personal relationship with Him, with my family, with my co-workers, and with the church. Um, who judges that? 
What if you come in there and you say, I believe the King James Bible is God's pure word and the others are satanic? I believe the Catholic Church is wicked and of the devil. Or do you think that the uh, leadership there is going to agree with you? They're going to say, oh, you don't have a genuine heart for God. You don't have love. That's exactly what they'll do. Number two, seek ways to be fed spiritually outside of the regular worship service of Calvary Church and to be accountable to other believers. you got to love that one, the thing of accountability to other believers. Uh, you're accountable to God. All right? And if you're accountable to other believers, you can pick the believers that you're accountable to. You know, kind of uh, make friends with the right kind of people that won't convict you about the sins that you're committing. Know what I mean? Other avenues may include an ABF, a small group, or men, a men or women's Bible study, an accountability group, etc. Isn't that wonderful? Number three, adhere to Calvary Church's doctrinal statement in all of my teaching and communication with the children. You know, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, number four, adhere to the children's ministry policies. You know, right. Number five, communicate God's love to each child who is in my care and model Christ-like behavior both in and out of my classroom. And their Christ-like behavior is the Antichrist. Okay, You study these modern professing Christians, you look at the Christ that they believe in, it's not the Jesus Christ of the Bible, it's the Antichrist. It's this guy that never judges anything, he's soft, he's effeminate, he just loves everybody and everything, and he just hates being judgmental. That's the Antichrist. By peace he shall destroy many, the Bible talks about. Uh, number six, be dependable in my ministry of by being faithful in attendance, prepared to teach, and prompt in arriving. Uh huh. Yeah, sure, you gotta love that one too. You know, you gotta be a faithful member now. You know, right. Number seven, communicate in advance to co workers and directors when I must be absent. Again, you have that. Number eight, follow the principles in the Peacemaker's Pledge when I have a conflict with a co worker, a classroom coordinator, or one of the ministry staff. How much you want to bet that the old uh, Peacemaker's Pledge um, would bar anybody from bringing up controversial issues of doctrine? Oh yeah. I know people that go there. Okay. I know the kind of uh, Christians that they are. I remember a friend of mine and I, we were out uh, handing out tracts at one time, and he hands this tract to this woman. I mean, she's standing there half naked, you know, barely any clothes on. And she goes, oh, I'm a Christian. You know, I said, oh, really? Uh... You know, how do you know? I go to Calvary Church. <laughs> Nothing but the finest, you know. Then here, of course, you have uh, Children's Ministry, Children's Ministries Covenant. Goes down through a bunch of different things. Please check to indicate that you have read and agreed with Children's Ministry General Teen Handbook, Policies and Guidelines, Ministry Handbook, Nursery and all the different things there, Calvary Church's doctrinal statement. Again, they're forcing their people to not question the authority. You have to come in here, you have to go along with the system because we're trying to keep everybody safe. See? It's all just right there. Politically correct, you know, governmental type of propaganda. You have to be part of the system. You're either with us or you're with the terrorists. You know, you have to go along with the system. Let's not have dissent now. No independent fault, please. Obey. Look at this next one here. Foundations. Establishing a firm foundation for pursuing life in Christ. Meaning the Antichrist. Do you desire to establish a stronger foundation for your Christian life and join us for a foundations, or for, for foundations, a ten-week class to help you develop a firm foundation for your relationship with God as you pursue life in Christ. Oh, wonderful! I'm sure that they'll teach them about the Bible version issue and how Catholicism killed Christians and down through the centuries, and how uh, Christian rock is derived from satanic heavy metal. And you can't Christianize it. And I'm sure they're going to teach them strong doctrine like that, you know, to really establish them uh, in their walk with, you know, trying to be like Christ. I'm sure. It says here, uh, who is it for? Seekers, those who are curious about God, Jesus, the Bible, or Christianity. Uh huh. 
lost people, um, beginners, those who just who have just begun a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh huh. Right. Returners, those who have some church experience but have been away for a while. Sure. Growing, those who are growing but need a refresher. What to expect? An interactive class focused on a few key truths, a few key truths, you know, tied to one primary passage each week. Wow, that sounds like good, strong doctrine. One primary passage and a, and a few key truths. Whew, boy, strong meat there, brother. A strong base on which additional truth can be built as you pursue life in Christ. Please register below. You can't just go to the class, you gotta register. And by the way, I've seen the advertisements for this wicked skull cult in the newspapers back when I used to live down in Pennsylvania. And they actually make you pay to come to their special classes. But don't worry, they give discounts if you're in the military. I'm not joking. They really, truly do. They have concerts where they have the gold circle, the silver circle, the copper circle. And the gold, of course, is the most expensive, going back down to the copper. Interesting. All this is New Testament. Don't you worry about it. This is all good stuff. Starting point. Just zoom in here a little bit so I can see it better. Okay, it says here, we believe that spiritual growth is not a one-size-fits-all. Therefore, at Calvary, our desire is to help each individual to take appropriate next steps, next steps for growth. Is your spiritual life categorized as thriving or just going through the motions? How do you know if you are growing? What are the basics we can't afford to forget? What is my next step? Okay, and uh, if you would like answers to these questions on how to take next steps for growth at Calvary, join us for starting point by registering here. Again, you got to register. What to expect? An interactive environment to help you take your next steps in spiritual growth. What to bring? Your Bible, a pen, and a desire to grow. And of course, your Bible means anything at all. They'll never ever say the King James Bible is God's perfect word. The others are rotten satanic perversions from the Vatican. They'll never do that. They support the new versions that come from the Vatican. Okay, it says here, the pastoral counseling ministry at Calvary Church exists to come alongside individuals facing a variety of needs with the goal of assisting them in becoming fully devoted followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please check to see if one of these group growth groups would be a benefit or of benefit to you in your particular situation. Okay, now, here again, it's no longer preaching the word. You know, I heard a, an old time preacher the one time he said, somebody asked him, he said, do you offer counseling? And he said, yes, I do. He said, in fact, I have a, a monthly program of counseling. And the guy said, really? He said, what is that? He said, open up the book of Proverbs and read one chapter a day. It'll take you through the whole way through the month. There's your counseling. You know? Amen. The Bible. Oh, no, 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 no. No, what I meant is, do you have counseling? See? What that means is, do you have worldly, secular counseling with Christian names? That's what that means. And by the way, the purpose of worldly secular counseling is to draw you in and to break down the barrier there where you're saying, hey, whoa, this is private information. You are not allowed to get into this area of my life. And see, once they break down those barriers, then you're going to be a lot quicker to say, oh, I guess I could finger scan. I, well, sure, I can tell you my marital status and I can tell you my email address and my household information and I'll let you photograph my children and database them and you can d database me and you can know everything about us. You see, it all ties together. Secular counseling being brought in to supposed churches and using it to break down people's barriers to get them into the system. Let's look at some of these things that they offer. First of all there, you have divorce care for those separated or divorced. And I know as a fact, by the way, my uncle, uh, my uncle Don was his name, he went to this exact place, the skull call here, he went there to the divorce care thing, married a woman who had been divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried. They got married, she 
was married to him till he died. Short time later, she's back to divorce care, met another man, married to him. And this divorce care thing, there are divorced people coming into this thing. It's a dating system for divorced people. I speak from personal experience. I know. It's a bunch of people sitting around talking about the problems that they went through with their former, their ex-husband. Oh, I can relate to you. Hey, why don't we go out on a date? Why don't you come back to my place later on? Oh, I'm sure that wouldn't go on. Divorce care for kids, for children of divorce, ages 6 through 12. Isn't that wonderful? Grief share, for those grieving the loss of someone close. New hope, for those in coming out of difficult life situations. In the wildflowers, for women who have experienced the trauma and pain of childhood sexual abuse. Grace restored, for wives of men struggling with pornography. Minds renewed, for those dealing with mental health issues. Faithful and True, Men's Purity Group. You see? All this stuff is to sit around and talk about personal things that you have no business talking about. The Bible teaches that you're to forget those things which are behind. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You come to the Lord for salvation, that old life's gone. The old man's dead. Move forward. The only reason that you're supposed to ever talk about things that are bad is because in the book of James it talks about confess your faults one to another. In other words, if you wrong a brother or a sister, then you go to them and you confess that fault to them. You don't come to them and say, I was in front of my computer the other night and I looked up something on the internet and I want to tell you all about it. Excuse me? You don't need to tell people about that stuff. All right? If you are convicted because you're looking at pornography, then you better get that thing cleaned up between you and God and don't bring shame on other people. Don't sully other people's minds with your dirty, depraved, sinful life. Don't do that. That's what a lot of this junk is. Disgusting. But I had a... Last time I talked about this skull cult, I had a brother actually send me this picture here... Very interesting, this picture at night of uh, this wicked place. And if you look at the tower on top there, it's not really a steeple, but you look at the top of the thing, you can actually superimpose the goat of Mendes there, the Baphomet, the head of the goat, and it actually almost lines up with the thing. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, and certainly you have satanic people that are going there, people that are going to take the mark of the beast and be damned to hell for all of eternity. I don't doubt that for a second, you know. Just incredible. But what about this thing of uh, finger scanning, the biometric system? thought this was interesting. A brother that I know sent me this picture. He was at an airport and he saw this picture right here. Absolutely incredible. Look at this. In the future, your DNA will be your data. And then they got the QR code on the guy's fingerprint. Interesting. Down here, tomorrow is full of opportunity. Just like if you go to the skull cult. It's full of opportunity. We're help, help, you know, we're going to make a culture of, of wonderful things. You know, it's a safe culture to, to live in. And right there it is. Interestingly, when we moved up here to the state of Maine, we were driving, and I actually saw this at a, uh, I think it's Exxon or something. Um, gas station, and here it talks about the speed pass. And it says about it's convenient. And of course, you know, look at the picture. She's got the, uh, the little speed pass thing on her finger. Hmm. Interesting. It's fast. Just like this uh, pastor said at the skull call. No cash, no cards, just wave your speed pass key tag to pay and go. It's secure. No personal or credit information is stored on your key tag. Remember that one. Look at the next one. Free. It's free to sign up and you can link your favorite credit or debit card account. Um, it just said secure. No personal or credit information is stored. You can link it to your credit card. 
You see the Orwellian double think? It's secure. It doesn't. We are going to take your personal information. All you have to do is sign up with your personal information. <laughs> okay. And interestingly, when I went to pay at this machine here, I went and I went to the the number pad there. You got to push everything now to get gas out of the stupid thing. And I went like this and put my hand over to the, you know, choose what kind of gas you need and all that other stuff. Went like that. It was right below this this scanner for the speed pass. And this, right, this bright red X from the scanner came upon my hand, my right hand. Put my hand in there to, to select what I needed and everything like that. Red X on my hand. You see, the system's already there. Now all they need is just to implant microchips into the hand. You put your hand in, boom, it p pulls up your information. There you go. Ready to go. Incredible. And you say, uh, well, this is all just online stuff. Okay, let me show you this one. It's an old uh, electric company I used to be with. How about that one? Penelec. We're going, what does it say? We're going mobile. The finger. Scan your finger. It's so convenient. It's so easy. It's so wonderful. And it's fun. And the 666 is all through our culture. Here again, I had, a, I had a brother send this to me. I thought this was rather telling. Here you have a Kohl's advertisement. It says, uh, Beats by Dr. Dre. And it looks like a red 6 there. Now look down here at these headphones. Six, six, six. Interesting collars there too, red, white, and black. The collars of Nazi Germany. Huh. And of course you go down here, these three little other speaker thingies. You have, you know, it'd be six, six, six again there if you could see those. Interesting. You know, one seventy nine ninety nine. If you would put that upside down, it'd be six, six, six again there at the. And of course I'm sure I'm just making all this stuff up, you know. But now we're gonna watch another video here. Here again I had somebody send this to me and it and it's just uh incredible. Um I'm just gonna show a screenshot here because it's it's not recorded very well. But you can see here, this man has his hand there underneath the scanner, and you can see it's it's uh, scanning his right hand. And then there's a, another screen up top that'll scan the forehead. And they say, oh, it's for an eye exam. Sure. These are some kind of new healthcare machines that are being put in Walmarts all across the nation. Very interesting. Might try to go to a Walmart sometime here and see if I can see these machines. But uh, just crazy. Now we're going to watch a video, okay, and I want to show you a news report where they're talking about biometrics. And they, notice what that pastor had said earlier, it's not mandatory, you don't have to do it, it's just, it's voluntary, but it's very fast, very convenient, it's very nice, but we're not going to force you. Remember that as we watch this video. Here we go. To let customers pay without using debit cards, credit cards, or even cash. NBC Action News reporter Amy Hawley takes an in-depth look at this controversial technology. Have you ever gone shopping or loaded up your cart with food or clothing and then get to the checkout line and find out you've left your wallet in the car? Well, tonight we'll show you the technology that makes it simple to just touch and go. You've seen the science fiction in movies? using unique biological characteristics instead of keys. He's been identified on the metro. A facial or iris scan to unlock doors and digital accounts. An electronic, paperless society. Yeah, John Ashton. Come summer, that kind of technology will leap off the big screen and one metro grocery store will make your identity available right at your fingertips. It's sci-fi technology that's about to enter the checkout lane 
all in the name of speed and convenience. You'll be able to buy anything from bread to beer if you agree to give the store your ultimate identity. Once you have your grocery scanned, now what do you do? You punch in your PIN number, touch your index finger to the image reader, and you've paid in about three seconds, all with the touch of your fingertips. It's called biometrics, an automated way to recognize you based on your unique biological characteristics. Each person's fingerprint is a unique identifier, not biologically duplicated anywhere else in the world. At this hen house at 87th and Lackman, customers will soon be able to register their checking and credit card account information by computer. Then you provide two fingerprints, so later, with a quick scan, the system can recognize you are uniquely you. Walk in with just your finger. It's much easier just to swipe your finger than to go through all the cards. Christy is one of thousands in the metro who already use biometrics for cashing payroll checks at Hen House grocery stores. She says she will continue to use her fingerprint when Hen House moves biometrics to the checkout lane. I've done it and I haven't had any problems. Ball's Hen House says identity theft and fraud have virtually gone away in their check cashing operation. They've used it there for the past three years. If you get your purse stolen or your car gets broken into, that type of thing, uh, they cannot bring that information into one of our stores and use that with, because you're not going to be there and your finger is not going to be present at the time of the transaction. But not everyone agrees that this is the way to go. It scares the heck out of me. ACLU Executive Director Dan Winter says numbers on a stolen credit card can be changed but once someone steals your fingerprint they've stolen it for life do not be sold on this because of a convenience do not give something away do not give yourself away something extremely personal you know today it's a fingerprint tomorrow it, a microchip Maybe that ushers in the mark of the beast. Donnie Attaway quit his management job at Quick Trip when the convenience store chain told him he had to swipe his finger to clock in and clock out. And although it may be optional today, you know, who knows about tomorrow. We're by no means going to force anybody to put down their finger image if they're not willing to do that. Experts say biometrics are about to pervade every aspect of our economy and daily lives. But they say for biometrics to work, there is one requirement, trust, something Christy already has. And you put your finger in there, and my name comes up, and she's got all my information. And it's that quick? It's very quick. Love it? Love it. People across the world already use biometrics. The U.S. government, the airlines, gas stations, even Walt Disney World uses technology that can read guest blood veins in lieu of carrying day passes. But the technology is new to the Metro. A Hen House spokesperson told us if people like biometrics at their 87th and Lackman store in Lenexa, they plan to roll it out as a payment option to other Hen House stores across the Metro. Amy Holly, NBC Action News. Now, I just want to say here, if you're against this technology, you are paranoid, okay? I think it's wonderful. You need to trust these people. There's absolutely no fear here. Everything's wonderful and good, and gummy bears and butterflies and flowers and walks in the park. I mean, why on earth would you be against something like this? Huh. If, you're, if you don't have chills right now as a Christian, Knowing what this thing is, I mean, they showed the one guy in there, and I praise the Lord for him, that quit his job because they were trying to make him finger scan. And he said, uh-uh, no, slippery slope. Finger scanning now, mark of the beast later. Uh-uh, not going to have anything to do with it. Smart man. Very smart man. But it's really even worse to see this hen house or whatever it is, this the secular world doing this thing. That's bad. But to have a professing Christian church do the same exact thing. Notice they said that we encourage our customers to give us their personal information. So does the Skull Cult. We encourage our customers to scan one finger from each hand. So does the Skull Cult. We encourage our people to have not only the fingerprint scan but also a PIN number. You see? It's all the same thing. It's the same thing. It's, it's the religious and the corporate world coming together. The spiritual and the secular governmental coming together into one system. This is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And if you don't see it, you're lost. You are lost. There's no other explanation. If you as a Christian cannot see 
what's really going on here? You are lost. You're not a real true convert of Jesus Christ. There's no other explanation. This system is very, very, very wicked. That's why I made this video, because it needs to be exposed. If you are going there to Calvary Church, the Skull Cult, as I think it should be called, more accurately, I mean, hey, the NIV is a better Bible than the King James, well then use the NIV word, the Skull. You know? Whatever. If you're going there, you better get out. Quickly. Very quickly. And you better ask God for forgiveness if you're already part of this system. And you better do what you can to get out of it quick. You know, there's a lot of people that got onto Facebook years and years ago. And everything was fine and dandy. And, oh, you want to remove your information? Well, it'll just, you know, that's fine. Whatever. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, well, you can't remove your information. It's ours. It's going to be the same system here. Well, you, you don't have to go to our church anymore, but uh, we're going to keep your information. And wherever you go, we're going to track you and follow you. Don't sign up for things like this. When you go to a store and they have a self-checkout line, stay away from it. You say, well, Brian, that's the only place that they, or the only thing that they have. Okay, then demand that you have a real cash register with a real person that you can talk to or don't even go to the place. Boycott it. You say, well, then, then you're trying to say we can stop the, the mark of the beast coming in. I didn't say that. I did not say that the Christians, by resisting the system, can stop it. But what I'm saying is, the Bible says that the offense must needs come, but woe to the man by whom the offense cometh. Don't help the mark of the beast system to come in. If you know that something is wrong, then you stand there, use it as an opportunity to witness. No, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. Why not? Why not? Because the Bible says it's the mark of the beast. This is the system that's coming in, and I am very much opposed to this. This is against my rights as a Christian. Use it as an opportunity to witness. Don't go, well, okay, I guess I can just do it this one time. Maybe, maybe I could just try it here. And, and you know, I, I've been going to Calvary Church since I was a boy, so I guess I should probably just stay here and continue. Don't you dare. Get out of that thing. Get out of that wicked, satanic cult while you still can. While the uh, welcome team, you know, isn't going to turn you over to the authorities because you're not part of their system. You better get out of that place. You better run away from it.